Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be setting up a really cool new feature in Apple. It is going to be the Code Assistant feature inside of Xcode 26. Now, not only are we going to get this set up very quickly, but we're also going to be able to go ahead and use it to build an app for us that actually does some really cool stuff. If you're ready to learn more about how to get your own Code Assistant set up inside of Xcode, stay tuned. So here we are in our brand new Xcode project. And now, as you can see over here on the left side of the screen, there isn't only our Project Navigator tab. There's now a new tab over here called Coding Assistant. So let's go ahead and click on that. And let's, say that, let's let it know that we want to set up intelligence. So now it looks like if you've got a ChatGPT account, you can go ahead and just turn that on. All right, so let's go ahead and let's just try, for example, the built-in ChatGPT option and let's see what we get so we click the turn on button and then we go uh, into our account here and so we'll click next and then it either gives us the option to either use chat gpt with an account or just turn it on so let's just try turning it on and see what happens cool and so it looks like we've got our limit set up in here and it looks like our intelligence is probably set up and ready to go so let's go ahead and give it a shot. And let's say that uh, I want you to build a view that displays a list of images. And let's just see what that gives us. Nice. Very cool. So as you can see, even with that one prompt, we have already got it actually modifying our code in place. So that was really cool and extremely easy to get set up. Now it's just using some of the built-in SF symbols here, but that is, that is not a bad start. Uh, that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can get it to add some navigation in there with it. So let's say, can you add in a navigation navigation split view and have it route to a details page for a specific image when it is selected in the list. Nice. So it looks like it's working on putting that together. Very cool, and it's keeping track of the selected image. Cool, so it got these extra image details view. It added our extra image detail view down here in our same file. That was pretty cool. Okay, and so if it is, if there is a selected image, then we display it. Otherwise, we let the user know, hey, there's no image displayed. Nice. So if we come over here and actually try this out, nice. <laughs> We can see that there's already a, a globe image, so we've got a globe detail. We've got a bolt detail, very cool. And a moon detail, nice. And a star detail, awesome. All right, so that's actually really, really cool and very useful. And we actually didn't have to do anything, <laughs> write any of this code ourselves. And it already looks pretty good. So let's, uh, let's see what else it can do. Let's see if it can, uh, can you, add a tab view at the bottom uh, let's just say can you add a tab view to the screen and have one tab for a profile view and one tab for a dashboard view the dashboard view will hold all of our favorite images ah uh, so it looks like that one broke it a little bit so we lost our detail view so let's see if we can get it to bring that back. I want to keep one tab. Uh, let's say 
I want another tab for displaying the list of images that we just had along with the details for those images. Can you add, whoops, add that back? Nice, okay. So it looks like it gave us, cool, it gave us our images back and added it to a tab on the bottom. Nice, that's actually pretty cool. The downside to this tab view, arguably though, is this is the old way of doing tabs is providing a view and then calling tab item down here. I believe that this method is deprecated, but let me double check really quickly. So if we say dot tab item, okay, yes. So dot tab item will be deprecated in a future version of iOS. Use the tab option with this initializer here and related initializers instead. Okay, so that is one downside. It did give me um, the older way of building out a tab view. So that's not quite as great, but still that's something that's relatively easy for us as a developer to look at and say, hey, this isn't quite right, uh, but this is still really cool. Now at the same time, there's also a downside to that. If a new developer uh, were to come into here and see this and say, oh look, my tab item is built, and then for example, WWDC just happened, and so they could say, oh man, I'm using this great new feature from WWDC, and it's giving them an old tab view or an old tab item, then that's probably not the best. That's not actually helping then developers learn the right way to do things. So maybe that's a little bit of feedback uh, at the same time as learning how to use this stuff is it is really cool that it was able to build this very quickly, but the long term, uh, this is not the best tab item to use. And to be fair, at the same time, this was still way faster than having me manually write out all of this sample data and all of these sample images. As you can see here, so we have already gotten it to write us <laughs> exactly 100 lines of code. And all we had to do was just kind of give it a general idea of where we were headed. So that was extremely cool. So now, as you can see over here, let's inspect what we've actually been given. Uh, so we've got our profile view, which is nice. We've got a dashboard view that holds all of the images that we just had. And then we've got our all images view that uh, just holds everything. Okay, so that is that is not bad at all. And in just that short amount of time, we were actually able to get our code assistant set up using ChatGPT, and we were actually able to get it to go ahead and start writing, a, writing out some code for us. And as you can see, just because, even though it's using an old tab view, we're already getting the nice new liquid glass effect that we get just by using Xcode 26. So it's amazing how all of these things work so well together. It's really cool. Apple did a great job on this. And with that, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And feel free to leave a comment and let me know what your favorite part of WWDC was. And let me know if there's anything in particular that you would love to learn more about. And if you do decide to leave a comment, just be nice about it. That's all I ask. Thanks. Have a great day.